And I know if you're here with me, we're on the same wavelength. You're just getting started. I don't care how long you've been in the business. You're excited about what you do. You're excited about the possibilities. You're excited about life. It's who we are. And little did I know that when I was comparing myself to the local Remax, to the local Keller Williams, I was holding myself back. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to another episode of Mindset Mastery. I am your host, AZ Araujo. And as a reminder, you can go to badassagents.com and get a recap of this show along with all the notes. And uh, I want to go ahead and get started and say hi to some of you that are already joining me. Good morning, Celia. Bobby, good morning to you. Dominique, Kim, Marissa, Amir, Michelle, good morning. We got the DTW uh, 12 week target group in here because I got Caroline. Uh, good morning, Claudia. We got uh, Nick, uh, Jesus. Good morning to you, Omar. What's going on, my brother Lorinda? And all those that are about to jump on in. And uh, oh, I'm feeling I'm feeling good, right? We're here. We are on the first week of July, officially the third quarter, and we got big announcements. And you know, I I woke up this morning and I am still training for the Ironman 70.3. Now there is a big possibility that this that this competition may not happen in October. It may not happen. I mean, uh, we've already been extended here in Phoenix where uh, we're all supposed to wear masks anywhere in public, right? And uh, it seems like there's more restrictions, more obstacles, more things to overcome. And it's, it's seeming less and less likely that this competition will actually proceed because everything's being pushed back. There's a lot of uncertainty. And, uh, you know, I think companies r r rather would not uh, put down these deposits if there is no clear path of putting these competitions together. But um, again, uh, I'm, I'm still training and I'm acting like if it's going to happen, because what if it does occur, right? And, and what if it does happen? I want to make sure I'm ready. I don't want to use the excuse that, well, you know, I didn't have enough time. There was a lot of uncertainty. And we can bring on this type of mentality into our business at any time, right? Um, that, you know, is the economy going to crash? Is, is, you know, our buyer's not going to buy? Our seller's going to be, uh, you know, uh, apprehensive. And the reality is, what if it doesn't? What if everything works out in your favor? Are you going to be prepared? And that's why it's so important to continue to do the things that, that have gotten you that success in the past and that continue to get that success here in the present. And I know that if I take care of myself, right? If I take care of myself and I'm, I'm, and I'm planning towards something that if it does come into fruition, I will be ready. I will be, I will be in my prime, right? The last thing I want, and I think that's how a lot of opportunities are missed, is that when that opportunity does come to you, you're ill-prepared, you're not ready to strike. You're not ready to, to lead. And I've seen this happen in many occasions where we're working hard, we're doing our things, but yet we don't push ourselves, right? We settle at some point with the type of market we, we, we decide to sell in. We settle in certain things, and then when that big opportunity comes, that big deal, that million-dollar buyer, that $2 million buyer, we don't know what to do. We're too apprehensive. We don't have the confidence. And that's the whole point of being able to work on yourself on a daily and go for that game plan. And now that we just started the third quarter, it is up to you to decide, am I going to lean in and follow the 12 week target book? And um, in the meantime, uh, Ricky, can you go ahead and grab that 12 week target book for me? Um, because it, it is a recommitment. It is a commitment on your side to say, hey, I'm going to do the prime three. I'm going to deposit on all factions of my life. I am going to deposit into myself. I'm going to go and deposit a power post, meaning I am going to take care of myself. I am going to make sure that I put a deposit towards my vitality, towards my energy, right? Towards the release of stress by working out, by doing something uh, active for myself. And then we have the power deposit. And what I love about this is that I can do two things at once. As I'm running this morning, I'm doing a three-mile run. And I remember a time where... Three miles seemed uh, pretty difficult. It seemed hard to, to run and, and not be gassed out, not be out of breath, not hating the entire process, right? But in fact, like loathing it, being in that uh, space where like, why am I doing this? To this morning where I'm just running, right? It's a zone one. Uh, and I'm doing a lot of heart rate training. So I'm in zone one where I have to keep my, my, um, my uh, heartbeats at a certain level. So that for me, it's like a 10 minute mile. 
And I felt so good about it. Like I'm enjoying the scenery. I'm enjoying the environments. I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about what's to come. I'm excited about Mindset Mastery. I'm excited about our big announcements. There was no, there was no thought of pain. There was no thought of loathing, of hating. It was just like a wake up to my body because I've conditioned myself to be there. And I did not settle. Because settling in my life, and maybe it's something you can reflect on in your life, has always brought me a sense of entitlement, right? I always got bored anytime I settled. Things didn't always necessarily go the path I wanted. I started nitpicking. I started blaming. I started wanting different, I, I started, you know, desiring uh, other things and even other people in this place of boredom and settling because I didn't challenge myself as a husband. I didn't challenge myself as a family man or a businessman. So even within my own business, I wanted always to do something else because I couldn't take that time or that effort to reinvest it into the business that has been paying me all these years. I started to hate it because I was settling. I didn't have these grand targets. I didn't see something greater for myself. And that boredom also caused a lot of comparison. I will never be as good as this company. I will never be you know, as happy as that couple. I will never have as much money as this other person. That's what settling did to me. It created this place of misery because I refused to do the things that got me into power. The things that get you focused and appreciate life. And as I woke up this morning, I opened up my garage like I normally do six days a week since I've been training for the 70.3. And I have this like little, little bench that I sit on, little foldable chair. It's not the most comfortable thing, but I, I just settle into it, right? I sit down on it and I just sit there as I get prepared for the bike ride in hand or the run. I sit there to wait for other people to come in, right? The group that I'm training with. And this morning, I, I look up as I'm, as I'm getting ready. I'm drinking my coffee, drinking some water, and I look up and I see the moon. This is at 5.30 in the morning. Now, if you need to live in Phoenix, you, you know how it is here. It's, it's pretty bright. But the moon is shining. It's glowing in the blue sky. It's glowing. And it, it gave me this sense of presence to my life. I'm looking at it and I can see all the little uh, shadows within the moon. All the designs, the pattern that the moon has. And I was just caught up, just staring at it for it seemed like a long time. So I quickly pull out my phone and I'm like trying to take a picture of it. And you know, technology nowadays has come a far way, a long way. And I'm thinking, what I see with my eyes, I can see with my phone. So I take my phone out, and I'm trying to take a picture of it. it. You cannot even see the detail of the moon. Here I can see it with my own eyes, but yet this phone couldn't capture the beauty of this world. And sometimes, you know, we don't, we don't realize how truly blessed we are to be in this place right here, right now. Because we're in this place of settling our entire lives and getting bored, and then going down the path of blame, going down the path of comparison, of complacency. When we do what we're supposed to do, it brings a level of certainty and a level of presence to us. I know the misery that settling can bring to you. And that's why I'm constantly here reminding you that you have more within you. But it doesn't mean that that's where you're supposed to stop. Just because you have it within you doesn't mean you, can, you can't get better. And I think that's where a lot of us fail to do. Not pushing ourselves. Not challenging ourselves. But giving into the temptations of mediocrity and complacency. We stop fighting for our marriage. We stop showing up for our business because it's good enough. It pays the bills. AZ, I know if I close one or two, I'll be okay. Because it was better than what I used to do. And according to the average income in Arizona, I'm doing better than them. So I am good, AZ. Living in the same house you've lived in the last 10 years. Driving the same car you've been driving for the last seven years. 
having the same computer for the last five years because you're too afraid to invest in your own company, invest in yourself, invest in your, own, in your family. That's where you have to ask yourself, am I settling? Settling brings a sense of fear. You're afraid to move up. You're afraid to challenge your business. So we come up with these excuses. Well, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a family man, AZ. You know, I want to be there for my family, so I can't always just think about business. It's not all about money. Your mindset is clouded because I've never said that. I've never said put your business in front of your family. I've never said put your business in front of your health. What I've always said is you can have it all. What I've always said is you're responsible for all things, not just one thing. Because you do further damage. You do damage to your family dynamic by settling. Got to understand that. It's not about making more money. It's about pushing yourself to see what you can create so you have a sense of purpose. Marriage may be good now, but could it be better? Can you show up more powerfully? Are you a tyrant? Are you a blamer? Do you shut down? You might have a lot of pride in being a good parent. But how often do you lose your cool? How often do you catch yourself telling them as opposed, as opposed to like coaching them? Settling is a poison. And it's not about, you know, you're not, not being satisfied with what we got. I'm saying you can stay present. I'm saying you can, be, you can feel very blessed for what you have right now, but understand this is just a fraction of what you were meant to create. Settling will bring complacency. Complacency brings boredom. When you're bored, you take your eyes off the game, off the path. And it's up to you to stay sharp. To realize you have a greater responsibility that affects many. You know, this morning, um, you know, when I first started this, this, this uh, brokerage, I mean, I, I started thinking about it. If I would have settled, where, where would I be right now? Where would I be? And, you know, as I start looking at our brokerage, you know, and I haven't looked at our numbers in a long time, like in, in comparison, right? Um, and I'm not saying this is, it's, it's not good to measure where you're at. It's, it, I'm not saying that, you know, comparison always is a bad thing. What I'm saying is if, that, is if that is the only thing that motivates you, you're limiting yourself. If you look at your numbers and you only compare yourself to this other person, you're limiting yourself. Because that's just a person within your sphere. But maybe you were meant to create something bigger beyond that. So we can't just compare to feel better about ourselves. We can use it as a, as a measuring stick, but never to what you are capable of. Because if you only compare to one person or a group of people, maybe that was only a fraction of what you could actually create. And I know it's easy, right? They're within your realm, they're within your circle. But what if you were meant to be something greater and create something greater? Maybe your marriage was supposed to be happier than just the circle you're in. Have you ever thought about that? Maybe your business is just a fraction of what you could truly create. But you only have your eyes set on one or two individuals. Instead of like putting that on yourself and saying, what else can I do? How many 
other families can I help? How many other people can I impact? And I started looking and I remember starting out at this brokerage like, I, I had this vision, but I never believed in it. Like I, I, I would say it, but there was not a lot of sustenance behind it. It was like, it's hard to describe. You know, it's, it's, it's almost hypocritical. You know, because I would say, you know, I, I really wanted the, I wanted to be here with this brokerage, but my actions never always aligned with it. I didn't put my best foot forward always. When an obstacle would overcome, I was more likely to fold than to push. Which would only delay the impact I can make on those that I choose to run here with me. And anytime you, you fold, right, you, you delay your, the inevitable. Anytime you crumble to the pressure, all you do is push where you were supposed to be farther down into the future which means less satisfaction during that process. And I remember I used to just sit here and, and you know, just compare it to all the local brokerages here. And I was like, oh my God, like, how am I ever going to compete? Like, these are worldwide companies. They're national companies, they're franchises, they're 100% shops, come one, come all. They have like 700 agents here. How are we even going to compete? What do I have to offer? And you may be thinking the same thing for your business. You've only been in the game less than five years, a couple years, or maybe you're just getting started and you look at all these big players. What do I have to offer? Look how much experience they have. They sold hundreds of millions of dollars worth of real estate. What do I have? And understand that is a truth. That is a reality if you choose to buy into it. Or you can look back and say that was a lot of hard work there. That was a lot of dedication. That was many years there. I will be there one day. But that's hard to say because we want everything now. And I get it. And I get it. But it's not settle. It's me deciding not to settle that we have the systems, the processes, the best coaching system in the entire, I would say, in the entire country. And I have the numbers to prove it. Understand we're still a relatively young company. And I decided to look at the numbers today and not to say, am I better than or less than or whatever it may be. But there were some surprising numbers in there. Out of the entire Maricopa County, we're one of the top 25 brokerages in the entire county. And I'm talking about against other brokerages that have 700 plus agents against all those luxury uh, brokerages that we, you know, think that they have it all figured, all figured out. And when we start diving into that a little bit more, in our market, there's not another brokerage that could touch us on sales per agent. And when we open up that to the entire Maricopa County, we're only a handful of brokerages that can say that. And you're here. You're here. And the reason we're able to say that is because you decided not to settle. You decided to lean in when it got tough. And we all have that choice. And it's re realizing that we have to recalibrate and recommit on a daily. We have to pour into ourselves more than anything else because our mind has to be right. Our health needs to be right. Our vision, our sense of purpose has to be in line with what we want. And as I start looking at the numbers more, we're like one of two or three brokerages in the entire Maricopa County 
and I would even be willing to say the, the, the state, but I'm just going to stay here, Maricopa County, because those are the numbers I saw, that are independent, non-franchised, or 100% come one, come all model. And we're just getting started. Because I refuse to stop. I refuse to settle. And I know if you're here with me, we're on the same wavelength. You're just getting started. I don't care how long you've been in the business. You're excited about what you do. You're excited about the possibilities. You're excited about life. It's who we are. And little did I know that when I was comparing myself to the local Remax, to the local Keller Williams, I was holding myself back. My vision was too small. We're bigger than that. Blowing them out of the water, right? But it's not about competition. Because I understand the struggles that they face as business owners as well. But I also got to have a lot of satisfaction knowing that we're doing the right things. That we're meant to last. And those same companies that looked at me like, oh, yeah. Hey, why don't you come and join us? And I've told that story before. Close down your doors. You can't compete. We're leading our market. Because of you. As we're seeing numbers double, triple, 5x from last year. Because you decided not to settle when there was a lot of uncertainty. You decided to keep going. You decided you were the master of your own faith, the master of your destiny. Because you understand, settling brings misery. Now when I say the phrase, and I think I heard it from Tony Robbins back in 2013, as I, I was in his, uh, in his business mastery class, a $10,000 program for four days, right? And I'm not afraid to reinvest. I'm, I'm not. I'm not afraid to invest in myself. I'm not afraid to invest in coaches and mentors that have experience. I'm not. I do it to this day. And I was there with Tony Robbins, probably, I don't know, 400 people, right? And he kept on saying a phrase, I have everything within me now. I have everything within me now. And it is a very true statement. You have everything within you now to be able to overcome whatever you have now but it will never be good enough to go where you want to go. So that's why it's so important you continue to lean in, you continue to improve yourself and not settle. You don't need any additional skill sets or mindsets right now to get over whatever obstacles you're facing. You don't. You have everything within you now. But to get to the next level, that's going to require commitment. That's going to require consistency and a drive and a focus not to quit. It's real easy to settle. It's real easy. And maybe you settled here for many years. Maybe your financial situation is settled, but you, you refuse to like push yourself and get the home that you've always dreamed of, that your kids want and desire, that your spouse has always wanted because you're afraid. Yet you're making five times more than you've ever made in your life, but you're afraid. Maybe it's that time for you. Maybe you've been needing that employer for a long time and you're making a lot more, but yet you notice your time disappearing. The time you spend at home, the time you spend with your family is disappearing. The time you have for yourself. 
when you settle, you start buying into the story, this is all I have. This is all I can create. This is all I'm capable of. Yet I'm able to witness it day in and day out. Those that decide that this is not as far as they're going to go. Create a new level of happiness. Is there some challenges? Yeah. Whenever you hire an employee, there's going to be some massive challenges. There's going to be, you know, some heartache. There's going to be some losses, maybe. And you may regret the decision before you actually love what you decided to do. And it could be devastating sometimes because you're putting your trust in someone else to help you grow your business. And I'm going to tell you something. They're not always going to have the same passion as you, so don't expect it. I remember we lost an account. It was 100, uh, we used to make from them yearly 180 to $250,000 a year. They were a pretty large account. And, um, you know, they, they were pretty, um, they, they had a lot of guidelines that we had to follow. And, you know, I have to tell you, they did give us, you know, some warnings. They, they said, hey, listen, we're, we're changing our privacy policies. And when you send this contract to us, I want to make that you, you, you cannot send us a copy of their personal check. We, we don't need that. That's personal information. We don't need this as a massive, as a big corporation. We don't need that. We also don't need a copy of their license. I know you were used to sending a copy of their license, but we don't need that right now either. So stop doing the things you were used to and follow this new policy. So I said, okay, cool. I read it. I told my crew about it. We're like, okay, hey, don't send this. We missed it. We, we ended up sending some, some information that we shouldn't have sent. They gave us a warning. And they suspended us. So we had a little meeting. Hey, guys, remember not to do this, that, or the other. Guess what? We did it again. And this time, they weren't so forgiving. They said, you're done. You're not going to be our, one of our preferred vendors. You're done. That was devastating. That account alone brought us between one hundred eighty dollars and $250,000 income. Income that was used to pay our employees. Income that was used to pay for our buildings. Income that was something we essentially depended on. If I would have just sat there and blamed the employee that did that, and we didn't even fire her, and I'll tell you why, because it was lack of leadership on my side, and it was also a great lesson for me that would serve me today, that I still have to be involved. I cannot just sit back and pretend that I've already arrived when I haven't. I can't spend all this time and all these years trying to build something in the hopes of what? Hanging out by the beach? Because I'll get bored with that in about three days. But I understand that I need people to help me. And I also realize I can't take my eye off the, off the ball, off the path. And I have to continue to lead just like I lead my family, just like I lead myself, just like I lead this business. Knowing that I can't settle, and that's exactly what happened. I settled. I thought this was just going to be taken care of. I should have emphasized it more. If it was that important, I should have sat that person down and talked to them clearly. But I didn't. I thought I arrived. And I took my eye off the ball. So, as we start today, I want you to think about a couple things. Have you caught yourself settling? Have you caught yourself comparing yourself to just the people around you as opposed to looking bigger and greater? Have you looked at your numbers recently? Have you compared 
yourself to yourself. I think you would be pleasantly surprised of how far you've come. For many of you, you guys are sitting in a spot right now where you're blowing out your, the, the numbers of what you wanted to create this year. I've had at least a handful of conversations with, with people that had a number on January 1st that they're already three quarters of the way done and we still have six months left. The person that thought in January 1st that the $10 million at the end of the year would be good enough now find themselves going to blow that out of the water or the 15 or the 20. Why? Because they did the, the right things throughout, throughout that time. You see, they've become better than the person they were six months ago. You've become better than the person you were six months ago. So yes, what you thought was impossible now is right over that hill. You can catch a glimpse of it. It's right there within your grasp. It's no longer this unachievable goal. It's there. We have six full months to show to yourself what you're made of. And I'm proud to run with you guys. So there will be no settling here. Thank you again for joining me. Let's go ahead and uh, go over a few of the comments that are here. Uh, we got JJ on the call. Chris, what's going on? Sergio, David, Audra, good morning. Naomi, good morning, Maria, Isela, Rudy. My first year of business settling took me back where I was working so hard to get out of financially and in relationships. At one point, I felt like I'd made it or arrived and took my foot off the gas. I put unnecessary pain to myself and everyone around me, but I realized my mistake. I haven't looked back since. I will not settle. I will not fail. I will not stop. That's Rudy. Rudy and, and you know, going into his second year in real estate, and, and what people don't understand, you know, when you push this hard, there's going to be some challenges that feel like are bigger than us because you're moving at a fast pace. But staying true to what's worth, staying true to yourself and, and making these deposits within yourself, you start getting these massive results. And these results are very common around here at Asian Associates, right? And when we look at the sales per agent numbers that we have here, you're more likely to run into a producer in business, but here's the beautiful part about it, not just in business, a producer in life, someone that's showing up powerfully at home, someone who's taking care of themselves, someone who's building the game to last. You will not run into another group of individuals like you will run here. You will not, because somewhere along the lines, they drop the ball in one or two of those other elements and are only focused on business. We do it all. So yeah, it's special. And yeah, these numbers to the outside seem impossible. Here, they're very common. And I love it. We got Sergio sitting here in the sauna after the two workouts this morning and feeling on fire, knowing that I am pushing myself, knowing that I will not settle again in my life, knowing that the tidal wave of abundance is on my horizon. Thank you for the push, Iron Man crew. And how different is that, Sergio? Dude, you, you've, you put in a, a couple hours already into yourself and you're in the sauna recovering. When you start comparing to how it used to be, you would get up and, and rush to the office with no power, which means you, you would come home depleted from a hard day's work, nowhere to release. So maybe you were like me. I would release it on my family. I would unleash it on my family. A tyrant, an impatient person. But now I got more love. I'm more gracious, I'm more appreciative, I'm more forgiving, I'm less critical. because of those power deposits in the morning. It feels so good, right? Because when you push yourself, you see greater things for yourself. And that's the beauty of this game. 
We got Caroline Germain in the zone. Get in the zone. Lily Mora, I'm too good. I'm not okay with settling. I'm done. I'm frustrated. Yeah. Settling does bring those, those, uh, those senses of, of frustration, of almost anger and resentment, even resentment towards others that are succeeding. Because you're like, how come it's not this painful for them? When we don't have an idea of what they're having to overcome. In fact, some of their challenges are even greater than we ever would anticipate. But they just keep fighting. They keep going. Let's see here. We got uh, Ruth. So true. I've never even thought I'd make six figures. How true is that, Ruth? Now it's just who you are. It's what you do. And you do it well. We got Kim Julio Sergio. I'm just getting started and I am all in. No questions. And this is just the beginning, my brother. It takes a great leader teacher to build this tribe and let them lead and teach. Thank you, AZ and Carla, for not settling and willing to bring us together unstoppable. I got chills reading that. And, it, and it's us collectively. It's, I, I can't tell you how, how, how much satisfaction it gives me Like when, when you guys divulge what you do. Like You don't hold back and trying to help out a fellow agent. Even though, even though technically they're your competitor, you give them your all authentically. And it goes a long way because you know that if they rise up, it impacts more than just their finances. It goes into their family, to their confidence. And I love it. Good morning, Fernanda. Caroline, I'm so proud to run with all of you. Thank you for everything. Jasenia, proud to be part of a brokerage that believes in us as much as we believe in ourselves. I love it. Gabe, wow, it, it is a gut check time, and it is time to rise. No more falling. Amen. Truth never felt so damn good. Well, I want to thank you for joining me for another episode of Mindset Mastery. You know exactly what to do. You have it all within you now but you will need to improve to get where you want to go. Thank you again, and I will talk to you soon.